Our producer sucks. And I hate Mondays. That sounds like something Charlie Brown would say. Yeah, I guess he did. Well, wasn't it Garfield that said I hate Mondays? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is why it's a sports podcast and not yeah. a fucking Comics comic podcast. Con- yeah. podcast. Oh, yeah. that Charles Schultz. Or who, yeah, who, who, Charles who Schultz drew? was pretty good. He was pretty good. Who, who ended up drawing? Who did Garfield? I, I have no idea. Garfield creator. Who is that? It I was... like Bloom County. Do you know what that is? Jim Davis. No, Bloom County. What's that? It's like a political penguin comic. It's got <laughs> like a cat that coughs up hairballs. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, you know what I'm talking I, I, about? I, I do recall. I recall, yeah, sitting, in, sitting at the table and, and yeah, that would be... I don't really remember reading that one, but I do remember uh, yeah, being it's part probably of the comic too advi- You know, too advanced for... <laughs> us eight eight kids. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's, st- he's still producing comics. I see them every once in a while. Is it? Where do you, where do you see these comics on? I mean, uh, like not in the newspaper, I would assume. Shout out to my mom on Facebook because she posts them all the time. <laughs> Are we really that lame that you just had to do a shout out to your mom on fucking Facebook? Shout out to my mother, who's the only person outside the of the producer that listens to this podcast. <laughs> Let's be honest, even Gary doesn't listen to it. He just, he just <laughs> of skips of through it. it. No, Gary, like, oh, you listen to the podcast? Okay. Unfortunately... Gary does listen to the podcast, he said. I heard, unfortunately. That's nice of him. Good job, yeah, Gary. Thank, thank you, Gary. That's the best compliment you've ever given me. Okay, well, well let's get started on sports. What, I so, guess we could do that. I mean, I'd rather talk about comics and I comic know strips. Our no. agenda today is to talk about, you know, the what we feel like is the best decade of the NBA. You yeah, know. best decade, best era. But I guess cool it is in the happen decade. today. Yes. Uh, okay. So let's. All right. We'll roll into it. Um, one second. Uh, okay. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of There's No Crying in Podcasting. I am your host Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me is my co-host Nick Alessandro. What's up, guys? Uh, right now, what is up, folks out there in radio broadcasting land? Radio your, land. Radio land. Hopefully, you're listening to us on a on a nice drive home from work <laughs> or to Can work you or driving home from work i mean I've just had to... listening to us that'd be nice i do that all the time i listen to myself talk do you do you just yeah. like have a tape recorder and you you record yourself you're in your charlie brown model wait you don't do you that back. <laughs> not anymore <laughs> make it feel weird. i i thought it was a cool thing to do because not everybody was doing it but now that That's i know true. you're doing it i know it's definitely not cool true so, true yeah honestly if you recorded me driving it'd just be a bunch of cussing and screaming <laughs> me too I mean, if you took a video of me you'd see me flip, flipping in, uh, flipping off all the Californians and yeah. people from the Northeast that, that don't know how to drive that's true um, no offense California. to any of you if you're, if you're from California or the Northeast I'm sure well, you, I mean no. they don't drive in the Northeast they're always on their taxis or subways you know whatever they're those kids off, are doing they're always on their taxis they're sitting on the top <laughs> they of the taxi sit on top of like, <laughs> like it's probably standing there being in it horse-drawn carriage or something <laughs> They're like, yeah, can I drive it? Yeah, don't stop till you get to the town square. <laughs> Some guys oh get really upset because Uber doesn't pay him enough for this shit. <laughs> so, so he has to listen to us for inspiration to keep going through the day. There we go. I'm, I'm it okay all with that. comes back to oh my god. To us. Let's let's start out talking a little bit about what happened in the world of sports over the last week. Okay. Uh, you said you had a couple things going on with MLB. What's up? So. The MLB Players Association, Association postponed the vote um, to talk about what's going on, which kind of sucks. Um, everybody was kind of expecting them to get it signed because right now the Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association is about 10 games off. Um, mm-hmm. The Players Association wants 70 games fully paid, and the owners um, want 60. Okay. Um, and so we knew that on Friday um, – and so we are expecting that to be signed so I can start watching baseball because I really freaking miss baseball. Um, but they didn't get it signed. And now it looks like um, they're either going to be, you know, Manfred is either going to force them to say, hey, you guys have to uh-huh. play 48 games, which is like the nuclear option. Nobody wants that, right? Right, right. Um, because that's, we're not even talking about like safety, about like safety measures with covid right now we're just talking yeah. about getting a season scheduled <laughs> we haven't even talked about how are we going to play this safely how are we going to work out safely uh you know they didn't really go through spring training so are they just going to start you know 
hurling 98 mile an hour fastballs on elbows that aren't worked up like we have all these questions right so yeah so i mean have you ever i mean have you ever like even as a kid did you ever play a game of baseball like a full actual game that meant something in front of no crowd at all like outside of the coaches and stuff like what's i mean and there has Maybe to be like, a gigantic difference for your like mentally and for your psyche when you're up to bat or when you're pitching or something like and there's no fans cheering you're just like i've oh. never had that i mean even okay. like t-ball right you got mom and dad praising you on because you yeah. hit the ball two feet and, and ran towards the, in the background you, yeah you ran to the right base that time instead of going to 30 you went to first you know congratulations right. <laughs> um good, good for you kid. story true story. You. i went backwards a lot it just makes more sense. Yeah, when I was in T-ball, it makes more sense to go clockwise. Okay. Right? And so yeah, I would go I from so third sure. to second to first to home. That's, you know, that's just the way I thought. So, you, like, did, did your coach ever try to coach that out of you? Or Yeah, obviously. Like, how, how long did you do that for? Was it for years? Or? <laughs> no. It was do like, you still do it? Or do you yell at the TV sometimes? sometimes and just like, oh, you're going the wrong way. Going the wrong way. <laughs> No. Get back there, kid, you fucking idiot. I think I did it once in a game and then a couple times in practice. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah. I'm like you four made... years old, you know? Like, uh, oh, okay. You made it sound like that you like were doing it up until you were like an adolescent. Oh, my God. Like, oh, can my you God. imagine? You're just like, you're out of kid pitch. You're like, or out of coach pitch. You're in kid pitch still running the wrong way. Nobody wants you on their team. Nobody yeah. would pick you. you but know, yeah, going back to what you were saying, I never have played without a crowd ever. Even in like, Jeez. not just baseball, but like all sports, right? Like, yeah, it's what's the, I mean, it almost seems kind of like, I mean, you know, we talked last week about, you know, with the UFC fighters going into the octagon with yep. nobody there yep. except the broadcasters and the cameramen. Yep. I mean, what do you, I mean, I feel like if you, if you get down, like if you're, if you're losing the match, there's no cheering to provide that level of motivation yeah, and inspiration. Strong. Right, yeah, to, like, lift you up and propel you over the finish line and to make a comeback. So, like, it seems like the story of the underdog is completely, it completely disappears if you don't I mean, it could also go the other way, too, right? Yeah, it could, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I remember a time, I'll go back to baseball. Um, it was a really close game, and I was up to bat, bat, and there was a runner on third, two outs, top of the ninth. Or no, right. bottom of the ninth, sorry. Okay. And... I was nervous because the game was on the line and it was really loud. I was playing uh -huh. Cooperstown, New York, and it was oh, loud yeah, at that know. game. And people right. were all screaming. And I mean, I would have liked it if it was quiet. Right. Because I feel like I would have been able to focus a little bit more. My jitters would have uh -huh. calmed down. So I think it goes both ways. I think the underdog, yeah, like the underdog gets hurt a lot more. But mm -hmm. I think if you're like in an intense moment, I think it helps a little bit. Sure. Yeah. I know. I mean, yeah, I guess I could see that. I guess if you're, I mean, yeah, if you're leading, then yeah, you like don't have that distraction in the mm -hmm. NBA. That's true. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. No one I weighing those, was... those, those stupid fucking uh, those boom swimming boom pool noodles. <laughs> that they have, like, boom, boom, boom sticks. Boom, boom. Well, they are called booms. Yeah. Or the, the thunder clappers. Or oh, whatever, yeah. The boom boom sticks. Thunder. thunder sticks, I think is what people thunder call it. Yeah. There you go. We yeah, were there both half right. Yeah. We we're close. <laughs> <laughs> what I really want, do you remember Vuvuzelas? Do you remember yes, from the World, World Cup? Cup? Yes, I do. Vuvuzelas? I want those to make a comeback and just be like a ton of them in an NBA stadium. Those are, no, that would, no, it's an echo chamber. It's, it's a literal, it's a literal echo chamber in that. No, that would be horrible. I would be, I was listening to it at the 2010 World Cup when they were like really, yeah, they were really, so I still South play. Africa, that's when they were huge. Yeah. When they're in Johannesburg, yeah. So yep. I actually still have and play on my uh, on the Xbox 360 once in a while. Play that 2010 World Cup, uh, and they actually have that sound oh, effect throughout God. every match. That would be awful. It, it is awful. It's super annoying. So sometimes I just have to mute the TV and just and just play it like it is and no sound at all. Because I, you know, I guess I yeah. can go into the audio effects and turn, turn it, down. it down. But why would but anyone just, do that? No, and that just takes. And you're too playing much a silent effort. soccer game. Oh my God! It's exact. It's COVID. It is. It's yeah. I mean, they the guys who made FIFA 2010 they knew. for the World Cup. They knew, man. They knew. The conspiracy yeah. theory: FIFA caused COVID. <laughs> they uh, there, there's a lot of shisty things going on with FIFA in general, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> like, uh, that's actually a good podcast baseball. topic. Yeah, <laughs> at some point.
Um, so, so it's so it's funny, yeah. So the MLB is going on with that. Um, I'm sure you heard about. There's a lot of concern with the NBA players union oh, right yeah. now with the rapid rise Freaking of COVID Kyrie. cases in Florida. Hmm? Freaking Kyrie. Freaking Kyrie. Well, Kyrie too, but you know Dwight Howard and stuff too. Yeah. And now they're just like they're like it has nothing to do with the BLM movement now. Yeah, now they're like, they're like oh my like, god, oh. it's dangerous. Yeah, because we can't. There's no current security protocols in place to test and uh, check yeah. out, do any pass and screen throughs for the staff that work at Walt Disney World. So I know the NBA is currently in the middle of trying to revise their initial safety guidelines. So we'll see what happens. I. I mean, really, so it's so they had talked about they they want their they want the waiters and the waitresses who are waiting on these players to actually instead of rotating between hotels, they want them to just stay at one hotel the entire yeah. time. And like the bus drivers as well, they're going to they're going to try to test all of them like once every three days. Uh, and uh, Dude, you better be getting paid yeah. well if you're going through that shit. They have they have to, man, because especially with you think about it. I guess they're they're not required to stay on site though, so that's not too bad. They can go home and see their families. They can yeah. go home to their own apartment. And, now, yeah, exactly. But that's once they're change. off, yeah, I think so too. I think they'll they'll require them to yeah. to stay around for the. If two you're months. gonna make them do all the things that you just said, why wouldn't you just quarantine everybody? It makes more sense. Yeah, you know? I mean the NBA has to be paying pretty good Let's money just to a lockdown use it anyways. Of Disney, right? I think it's already locked down at this point. I don't even think they're. Let's they triple right lock now? it down, dude. Triple lock it down. Triple lock down. Security guards, you know, sniper towers. It's like a triple dog dare. If you haven't gotten your ch- a temperature checked, instant tase. Instant tase. Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I want you to be the commissioner of the NBA, dude. I mean, uh, if, if we'd had it my way, there'd be no COVID in the NBA because nobody <laughs> wants to get tased. That's true. No one wants to get tased. If you so, if you want to get tased, then catch COVID. Yeah. If you're in know. Nick Alessandro's NBA. Yeah. Then <laughs> that's just that's how it goes. Good. Yeah, good segue into our topic this week of uh, the greatest era in NBA history. So uh, to kind of preface this, we're going to set some boundaries uh, and kind of discuss the variables that led to our individual decisions. And we'll go ahead and uh, classic debate style and we'll talk about the pros and cons each decade. Um, So we had we had mentioned earlier that to classify a decade to be one of the greatest or the era to be one of the greatest. Uh, decades just make it easier. Uh, you talk about the talent level that's at the top, the depth of talent that you have in your current pool, the popularity of the game as well, uh, and then obviously, which is you know the entertainment factor, of course. And a side thing that I didn't mention, but I thought was actually kind of cool that I thought about driving over here was the big storylines that were going on currently during those times so yeah. you know whether it's the the, Sha- the Shaq and kobe breakup in the early 2000s or the uh the evolving of the decision and the super teams Dude, you know by the, the heat and decision the 2010s right and i remember watching that too i was sitting oh, at hated my, old, my old hangout at applebee's shout out to them um was it during what? club apple it was during well it Clapple? was it was like the wednesday before or something okay. um yeah Clapple. Um, but yeah, we were sitting down and we actually were the only people in there to watch. It was me, Treese, and Schnick. And we were just sitting down there trying to watch the decision. We kept turning the volume up because there were so many people in there and they kept coming over and telling us to turn it down. And we almost got kicked out just because we had it up so loud. There were a lot of people there. It was, it was important, you know? Um, I know LeBron still gets a lot of flack for that. Yeah, because it was really freaking shitty. I mean, at least he gave the he made he gave the donations and everything to, to charity. I mean, all the advertising money they got went to the boys and girls club. That's so nice. Honestly, good job, LeBron. Good job, LeBron. Way Except to... for the fact that like you completely screwed your hometown, <laughs> you're a complete ass on like national television about oh, it. Okay, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I agree with oh, you. Right. I don't necessarily know if that was necessary to Dude, do something like, like that. Like, that like, slap scale. in the face. <laughs> but, come on i think cleveland just really quick to, to to mention this real fast i think cleveland shot themselves in the foot you know dan gilbert did this to himself he had a chance oh, to mean, trade yeah. for a young in his prime amari stoudemire but he didn't want to fucking give up jj hickson because they thought he was oh, so good oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how long does jj hickson play after after the 2010 season like three or four more years and he got yeah. traded like three times like it's yeah. ridiculous yeah. <laughs> like that's why you didn't want to trade for one of the best power forwards in the game True. to True. keep your superstar in town. You know, you had he had a he had a deep roster. Um, you know, they had they had Mo Williams, they had Booby Gibson, they had Zadruna Sikowskis, the big Z, they had dude, Anton the Jameson. Z. The big Z. That was dude. the best, dude. He was. 
I, I bet he, you had like all this this huge talent pool, and you could have traded these pieces away to bring in at least one good player to play with him. I mean, his his best teammate that entire time was was Mo Williams. Like that's that's it. You know, the guy averaged sixteen points a game. And, yeah, I mean, LeBron carried that team. He did absolutely. They only made the playoffs because he you know he averaged I mean, close to forty five like points Michael a game Jordan against the Pistons in the finals. Ladies. Yeah, that's true. But hey, you know the Bulls. Very comparable. Yeah, they are. You know, but I mean, you know, I mean, that's and and we'll actually we'll get into that. So I'm I'm off that wagon. But um, I I'm think off that, that wagon. I'm off that wagon. That's a debate for another wagon. day. So I'll so Nick, I, I will let you start and go ahead and with your original pick. I've, I've got a couple decades that I can make an argument for. But in your opinion, what See, was? I'd have changed my original pick. Okay, well that's perfectly fine. Whatever you feel more comfortable uh, arguing for. Uh, so what's your greatest era of all time? I started out talking about you know with you thinking the 1990s was going to be my greatest era, but okay. I mean, it's really close to me between the 90s and then 2010s, and I'm going to go with 2010s just because oh. the game has grown. It's all right. Go ahead. So much over this right, last right. decade. I mean, it's can, you, can, can you elaborate on that? What do you mean it's grown? Like as far well, as I mean, uh, popularity, as far or? As popularity of the sport, as far as how much skill the players have. Like I think a lot of these players that are playing right now would mm-hmm. be dominant in any decade, like okay. any decade. I know that's like LeBron James. He'd be a top two player any decade. Well, sure, but Kevin Durant, top player any decade. He's a little skinny, yeah, um, but he's a top player any decade. Uh, I mean Curry, that's like a three point dagger shooter. He wouldn't be the same if you put him in the nineties, eighties, or you know, or the eighties. He wouldn't be the same player. I don't know if he'd be like the superstar he is, just because. Sure. I, he wouldn't get the free three pointers that are that he's allowed to shoot, right? But we got Kawhi Leonard, dominant defender, dominant scorer. Now, I mean, uh, in the 2019 postseason, he averaged 30 points, nine rebounds, and four right. assists over 24 games. That's insane. Mm-hmm. That is a great. Number. I mean, that's. I mean, Kawhi Leonard. People don't even think about him as a top five player. It's hard for me to say that because I'm a Spurs fan and what he did. Um, but yeah. uh, he's definitely, I mean, he might be, I think he's a top mm-hmm. three player right now, easily. LeBron, mm-hmm. KD, and him. I didn't even bring up James Harden. Like, we've got all these players that are literally just changing the game. It's more athletic. It's fast-paced. It's fun to watch. The dunks are insane. Um, I mean, it's be- it's a beautiful game. You know, the Spurs had that ama- that team where they just passed around so quickly, making decisions. Yeah, um, early 2010 Spurs was was one to yeah. build, that's for sure. Yeah, and I mean, we got, you know, LeBron going back to Cleveland, winning a championship in Cleveland against the Warriors, which in coming back from down 3-1. Um, we've got the Warriors dynasty, because that's what that was. I hate to say yeah. that too, but that, it was a dynasty. It's and accurate. It's, Five straight trips to the NBA Finals. Finals. No team had done that since the Celtics in the 60s. So, like that many in a row. Right. And, I mean, part of the reason I – I mean, it's hard, too, for me because there was – I think there was discrepancy between – the Warriors were just so dominant in 2000, like, for a lot of this decade. Um, They pretty much dominated dominated the West. I mean, they should have – there was a couple times they should have lost to the Conference Finals. Uh, like Houston would have beat them if Chris Paul didn't injure a hammy. Like, without a doubt, they would have. I think Houston would have won it all that year if Chris right. Paul didn't injure that hammy. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I think the, the Clippers actually were one of those, honestly, one of the biggest disappointments of a team oh, that yeah. could have gone all the way because they were in contention for really from 2010 all the way through 2015 um, yeah. after that Chris Paul trade. I mean, they they – Shot so many Blake leads. Griffin, DeAndre Jordan. Yeah. I mean, that team was – and Chris, that was Chris Paul in his prime. Yeah. Um, and Chris Paul is still good. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's not the same. He's much mm-hmm. more, you know, of a passing point guard now. Right. But he's still really good. And I'm excited to see what James Harden does. I mean, he's 30, going to be 31 now. But, like – 
Right. His game is going to be there for a while, I think, as long as his legs hold out. I don't know. I just think this decade was something special. Um, and mm-hmm. I think because of this decade, I think the NBA might even overshoot football. Um, okay. Ne- for the next decade. Like, I think the NBA will have more viewers and be more exciting than football from 2020 to 2030. Okay. So what do you think was the biggest storyline of the 20 teens or the 2010s? What do you like as far as not necessarily who won the title and stuff, but the biggest ongoing dramatic shift, I guess, uh, you know, the biggest storyline that may have caught you the attention of I mean, when did the sports scores. When did the decision happen? That would have been 2010. I'm Is pretty it, sure LeBron was in from 2010. Yeah, I think it was 20, because LeBron was in Miami from 2010 to 2014, I'm pretty sure. Because um, I think that's the biggest story. Yeah, July 8th of, yeah, July 8th of 2010 is when he had that conference. So that's the definitely interview. the biggest thing is super teams. I think mm-hmm. it's super teams and the offensive explosion because of rule changes. Very true. Very true. I think those are the two biggest storylines, right? Because without the decision, we don't have, you know, God, those four years of just amazing drama. That was the decision. Not one, not two, not three, not four, you know. But two. Not four, not five, not six, but two. Two championships. (laughs) And should have been one. If it wasn't for a Popovich mistake, should have been one. If he oh. had kept, I don't, I, and still to this day, I don't, I'm sure there was a reason because he's one of the gr- top three greatest coaches to ever live, you know, if not the greatest. I'd like to know the reason uh, behind that. I would like to know why Duncan wasn't in that game because there was no one big enough to box Bosch out and he just, he, he jumps up, rebounds, and flicks it to Allen in the corner. And when you got Ray Allen shooting a corner three, yeah. there's no one more clutch in the last 10 years, 15 years. I'll never years. forget that. My heart sank. But yeah, without, you know, God. I think the super teams are huge, you know, the Warriors super team. Because that's what that is. And that team is going to get even scarier next year because they're probably going to have the number one draft pick. Right. Um, yeah. And they're still going to have Curry. They're still going to have Thompson. And they're still going to have Green. Mm-hmm. Like, they get, I don't, who's going to be in the next next draft? Do they have a, a small four that they can pick up there? Uh, nobody that's really come out. And that's the problem. That's that's what happened when it's COVID came along. sports. Yeah, because March March Madness usually gives us uh, gives yeah. um, the league and you know uh, the viewers and the fans a yeah. look inside the actual college depth draft class because we get to see them play against the greatest competition on yeah, national televised games on six channels. Um, and we didn't get to see that this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's you know, I, I mean, next decade. Let's talk about. I just think, like I said, those super teams, and I mm-hmm. think you know, like I, I said earlier, the change of the rules to allow players like Curry and right. James Harden to just go off on the three-pointer. Right. I mean, yeah. Thompson, too. If Thompson would be a really great player in another decade, but he's amazing because of this decade, because he's right. able to shoot threes at for no problem, like no issue. If, yeah. As a defender, you can't step in. You can't, you know, stop the three-point shot. Right. So just so just a little piece of stats for you, to. So I'll, I'll – I'll be on your side for this one and back you up. So based off if it's just an offensive explosion, the average points per game for the last two years in particular were around 111 points per game from the 2018 start of that season to the current 2020 season. Uh, And we haven't had that high of a points per game total all the way since, oh, geez. I mean, the 88-89 season was about 109. And through the 80s, it was around 110 points that uh, teams averaged at that point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, and people don't get me wrong. People, everyone's like defense wins championships, you know, but offense uh, brings in ratings and brings in viewership. Um, so you're right. I mean, as far as making it a lucrative business, I would I would probably have to agree with you that yeah, definitely the super teams and the amount of I mean the fact that we teams are shooting league wide at this point they're shooting almost 52 percent of their field goal attempts from behind the three-point arc Man, which that's shattered crazy. the initial arc. that's over half their shots because if you yeah. look at it i guess with the math if you make one three-point or two three-pointers that's the equivalent of making you know three two-pointers so right. mathematically it makes more sense to just shoot threes and chuck them up these you know, damn math nerds got into sports shout yeah. out statistics you know what and gary that's money ball that's yeah, actual money ball right there that's actual money ball. Ball. 
our producer always, whenever some type of sports thing happens and it's positive and goes really well, Gary always says it's a product of Moneyball, but it's never he's accurate. Right, right, now. So, right now he's accurate, yeah. Good job, Gary. The Astros <laughs> played Moneyball. <laughs> yeah, and then they, they got they got fucked over. Yeah. Not fucked over, they yeah. fucked themselves. But. but they played Moneyball. <laughs> so who, who did that originally? That was, uh, that was the A's that did that. Oakland originally, A's. Right? Yep. Okay, the Oakland A's. That's right. Um, so okay, so who played solid on solid reasons for for the 2010s being yeah. being the best. So I will agree with you in in the terms that just due to inflation, obviously this is you know, and the new TV deals that they have yeah. with uh, with Disney and Turner putting um, advertisements on the jerseys. Right. Exactly. And yeah. Right. Exactly. With you know, you see Bumble and you see yep. Bubble Gum Shrimp and you see State Farm and yeah, and the jerseys on the, the so discount double check. Oh, that's yeah. football. Never mind. That's football. Ignore that. How's I've seen it? players do it. I've seen NBA players do it. Um, so yeah, for for that, it's cool. I personally think that the 2010s, as far as not necessarily for popularity, but as far as skill, I would say these guys are probably some of the least skilled that we've ever had. Actually, really? I, I so if you're talking about if you're talking about passing and ball handling and shooting. Yeah, I mean, you can make a case that this is just as good of an era collectively as, you know, the 80s or 90s was. Um, definitely the best for shooting, for sure. A hundred percent. Mainly because, maybe because, probably just because they're chucking up so many per game. I mean, in the 80s, you know, they were averaging around, they're hovering around 39, 40 percent. You know, the fact that they have a, a, a 13, 14 percent increase within a span of two decades is, is pretty phenomenal, actually. Yeah. Um, but I don't feel like... Honestly, if, if you stuck a lot of these, so go back to your initial argument, if you go and stick a lot of these players back in the 80s and the 90s, maybe not, even the 2000s, I'll say, um, if you stick a lot of them back then, I think a lot of them would actually not play as well. LeBron James, you could stick him in any decade, he's going to dominate because he's a physical specimen yeah. and his basketball IQ is just through the roof. Yeah. Um, Kevin Durant is, with the exception of Dirk Nowitzki's Fade away one footed shot and Kareem skyhook. There's really no more difficult shot to stop than a seven footer who shoots above his head. Yeah. Like, there's no way to block that. Cool. What are you going to do? Don't yeah. forget about Kawhi. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I mean, like, I don't think Kawhi, you think Kawhi's shot is, is like one of the signature shots of all time, like that it, it, it just can't be stopped or something. What do you I mean? mean, look what he did last playoffs. That core, yeah. You know, yeah, the corner three. But I, I mean, like, if you so I guess I mean like if you put, like if you put Scottie Pippen or you know a Tony Allen or just like a player who's the same size as Kawhi and has the same wingspan as him, if they get in his grill one on one, if they do a one on one basketball matchup and they're just on him like glue, but we see I don't that. Think, wait, who do we see that from? I mean, they put LeBron, Kevin Durant. They're not lockdown defenders, though. LeBron I mean, that's was true. at one point. But, I mean, he still scores. I can't sure. beat he's, he's uh, Draymond? That's close. Yeah, but Draymond can't jump as well anymore. He's kind of getting tubby. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I don't think, I think those three shots, those three players and their shots in particular were almost impossible to stop because of their height advantage and because yeah. of how high the positioning of their hand was and then the arc on the shot as well. It's just, it's you can't jump up and block that. Insane. It is. It's, it's freaking nuts. It's a, it's a rainbow. Like, yeah. I mean, it really is. It just, it, it's beautiful. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, guys, like, I think Kawhi, Kawhi would do great in any other decade. Um, I still think Curry and Harden would be good in other decades. I think it would be hard to stop. They're both fantastic dribblers. Yeah. But you have to Harden remember that. in particular is very good. He's got ball handling. He, he is. But we also have to remember that around 30, 35% of Harden's scoring average per game is it's done at the free throw line. Yeah. And the, the free throw attempts that were attempted in the 80s and 90s were so much lower than they are today because the game was so much more physical. They didn't have, right. like, the hand, hand check rule was not a thing. The lane had not been widened to where it is now. The three point line hadn't been shortened. Like, there's there was a lot of, there was some, we always talk about there's so much more physicality back when yeah. we were kids watching the game. And I don't feel like those guys, they might do well eventually, but I think they have to adjust. And like, if you look back at them, um, even like a guy like Larry Bird, who's one of the best shooting big men to ever play, his shot was his shot was that same thing. He was, not only was he a bigger dude, but he is also a really gritty player. 
and he just he could take the abuse you know and if you look at his shots he had such an awkward form like if a guy got in his face and was clearly fouling him in today's nba that they would call that the refs would call that no yeah. problem in yeah. that nba he's they only would. getting that call 50 percent of the time yeah I you know and so i don't know it's, it's i also think it's, you're missing some players too though oh sure i am missing like, so Paul George, also, i think he can play in any decade sure. i think Paul George would be pretty well yeah, Giannis would be a terror. I mean, it wouldn't matter what decade you play. I think he, he be might be better in a different decade. Probably he would he would kill in the eighties because that yeah, was the yeah. decade of fast breaks. That was the decade That's of I mean. fast like, breaks. I think some of these players might be better in different tech. Like if we're going down that <laughs> route, that's true. Well, we, we are. I mean, there's some people like I agree with you on some points. Like Chris Paul, I don't think he'd be much of anything if if you put him in another decade. Kyrie Irving. <laughs> Like yeah, I Irving think. for sure. You're Irving for sure, and I don't. Chris I don't Paul would because... not be the superstar he is. Yeah, <sighs> maybe, maybe not. I, yeah, maybe not. I, I think Paul is. He's a bit of a whiner, you know. If you look at yeah. so we didn't get we didn't become guard. Yeah, that's true. And we didn't become guard centric again until you know the mid two thousands. Really, when the NBA when David Stern came in and was like, look. We're, we're losing ratings because the early yeah. 2000s was the slowest pace of basketball so in the history of the league. And that's a yeah. statistical fact. Um, and he came in and he was he was saying, look, we've got these great scorers like Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Ray and, Allen. And, and, and Ray Allen, and, and a lot of perimeter players like that. And the era of the big man, which was predominantly in the 90s, yeah. It's it's still there. Like you've still got Duncan, you got KG, you got C Web, you Shaq. know, um Shaq. Um you got a bunch of those you still got a bunch of those players, but it's too slow and it's we're losing rage, yeah. we're losing money. And so they had to come in and add those those rules to allow wing players to, you know, get around the hand check rule. I think um, they went too far. But that's just yeah, me. I do, and honestly, like, and I'll, I'll get into my decade in a second. But I, I do agree with you that it's it is fun to watch an NBA game now because they're so high scoring. Super fun. Um, but I just I don't think as far as defensively, I feel like there are only certain players nowadays that play defense, and it's not necessarily that the superstars can't play defense. It's just that they waste so much energy on the offensive end. They're like, oh, I got to save myself. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't have that from Michael Jordan and Clyde Drexler and John Stockton and Carl Malone Hakeem. and Hakeem. Any of those guys in or Magic or Larry, whoever. You didn't have that from any of those guys back then. They they were playing hard both ways, and it it made them suffer in certain games. And you you'd see them, they you know they the, the yeah. tread on the tires and stuff um, would start to go out. But I, I don't know. I, I I just feel like you know definitely the big. There's no big men today that I feel would be dominant in the NBA back in the, like in the eighties and the nineties, just, I, I, I think Anthony Davis is a really great player. I think he could be, if he, he might be the only player I'd say he Jokic, and Giannis. Maybe. I think Jokic is too soft. Honestly, he's a point center, which is cool. Well, I mean, like if you put him back there though, and he changed his game mm-hmm. a little bit to be like, I think he could be more aggressive. He, he would, he would have to, he would have to learn how to leverage his body. Cause if you look yeah. in at nowadays, when he goes against guys like Deandre Jordan or DeMarcus cousins or Anthony Davis, right? Any guys that are his size, he gets dominated in the post. He can't defend them. You know, he just gets pushed around like, because he's not, he's just not strong enough. And he doesn't know his footwork isn't really there. You know, that's what made Tim Duncan such a great player. He was never the most athletically gifted player ever. Howard in his prime. Uh, Dwight Howard could have played in, in that era. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but he was he was he was physical enough, and he was just naturally big enough. You know, um, wing players in that era. Uh, I, you know, I think they obviously they were used to it, and I'm not saying all these players couldn't do that if they tried and put their minds to it. But it's uh, they they just they seemed they didn't whine as much, and maybe that's fuck, maybe that's our problem as a society today. You know, the whole. First play, everybody gets a part, yeah, everybody gets a participation ribbon or whatever. My kid's not getting, I told Kaelin this the other day. I know this is off topic, but Kaelin and I are talking about future kids because I want three boys. Uh All three boys will play baseball. And if they don't win, Uh they will not, if they don't win something, you know, they get second place, third place, whatever, they're not getting shit. I didn't get a trophy for second place. You know how many times I won second place? I never got a trophy. Yeah. I like, no. My kids will not get trophies unless they win. What if you have three girls? I'm not having three girls. You're out of what, you're out of your mind. What if you do though? Um, I don't know. What are they gonna play? They'll all play. Play softball. Softball. No. 
I'll make no gymnastics. <laughs> so I'll go into gymnastics. Gymnastics. Yeah. <laughs> cool thing to do. Okay. What makes you think you have the gym- yeah, genetics to make a great yeah. gymnast? <laughs> Not that you don't. It's... I mean, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's kind of small. Gymnasts That's true. Small. Gymnasts are very small. Gymnasts are very small. You know, I'm, um, I'm tall-ish. You're tall and lanky, so that's why I, I was thinking. I was like, okay, I mean, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe swimming, maybe swimming, maybe basketball. Swimming. You know, yeah. I'm a terrible swimmer, though. But you still have the you have the body, you have the frame for it. Though. Like, you got swim, the long arms. This, you know. you know, that's a whole different argument because I believe that humans aren't supposed to fly and swim. So I don't understand why we have airplanes. <laughs> but I really don't understand why we get in the ocean. So yeah, that's we don't have flippers. I don't know why we're even there. Well, you know, we need to. We we need to. We need to. Are you talking about going in the ocean on a boat or in, like in Seriously. general or just I don't swimming? think we should ever get in the water. It's not what we're made to do. How the hell are we? How the hell are we supposed to? We're supposed to fish. There's you some just, delicious. You you're fish get, on the shore. No, you can get yes. you can get way more. You can get a larger amount of product if you go to the middle of the ocean, 20, 20 to fifty miles out. Yeah, but what happens when the ship sinks? You're screwed. Well, yeah, that's the a risk you take. A dolphin's fine. They're meant to be there. We're not. <laughs> you don't see any humans. You know dolphin diving 10,000 feet or whatever. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, I suppose not. <laughs> you don't see humans at the bottom of that giant trench in the middle of the ocean. But Gary, Jesus. does Gary know the name of that? See if he knows. What is that name of the trench? Uh, Gary, do you know the name of that giant trench in the middle of the ocean? Marianas. The Marianas? There you go. There you go. The Marianas Trench. Um, see, okay, so trip. let's... Sucks. Our producer's horrible. He won't even come over here and get on the podcast with us. Absolutely. He's, he's, he's creating a D&D game. Anyways, we're off topic. Uh, just so we stay on time here, because yeah. I have a second podcast to do after this, is, uh, oh, so, so from, <laughs> from, I'm a podcast fiend. Um, from my decade, I went ahead and I went with the 90s, okay? Um, I my thought, original choice. Yeah, your original choice. And I, I, I was actually debating between the 90s and the 2000s. Um, I know that the pace was slow in the 2000s, but the competition level, I still feel to this day, was probably at its highest peak as far as solid, just straight depth goes. Um, I feel like Jack once it's Duncan, all... Kevin Garnett, yeah, Alan exactly. Iverson. I can't think of any more after that. So, I mean, you see Le- LeBron, Carmelo, um, yeah, Wade... I mean, these guys oh, all started. We didn't talk about Jason Kidd and Steve Nash. No, we didn't. Um, Dude, so we lost think, them, actually. 2000 is a good decade. 2000 is a good decade. I, I think for the 90s, for me, it, it fit all of the criteria that we initially discussed. Yeah. Uh, it had the storylines. I understand for a lot of people, they're like, oh, Jordan and the Bulls ran away with it every year. Well, if you were actually alive in the 90s and paid attention to the games, you would realize that Jordan and the Bulls did not run away with it every year, no. and they were not the... Un, they were not undoubtedly the favorite to win it every year because there was a lot of turmoil, as we just saw with, with the last dance, uh, that documentary yeah. on ESPN. There's a lot of turmoil in that organization, you know? Um, and there's, it, the teams were better, too. It's, that, that's why I don't like when people compare the 90s Jordan Bulls to the mm-hmm. freaking Warriors because yeah. the Warriors didn't have the competition than the Bulls did, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just different times. You know, I, I, the, 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 Nash, the Knicks, the Super Magic, so the Sonics, yeah, the Blazers, the Rockets, yeah, and people, you know, people, you know, people are they forget the Spurs were still oh, really good yeah, before Duncan Spurs came along. David Robinson um, and Gervin, right? Wasn't he playing? Yeah, that? well, George Gervin was there up until like he was actually there in like the seventies and eighties. Um, but Robinson had he had Avery Johnson and Mario Ellie, Sean Elliott. Sean um, Elliott, yeah, that's yeah, who was one of the better three and D small forwards of all time that probably will never get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, but was part of some really good Spurs teams in their first hey, two title he's runs. A great announcer. <laughs> he is for Fox Sports Southwest. Yeah, yeah. he is a great announcer. Sean Elliott. Yeah, uh, people always forget um, the Cavaliers from the nineties. I mean that team. I mean that team was actually pretty stacked honestly i mean they they featured one of the most underrated point guards in nba history in my opinion um oh god why am i forgetting this dude's name um I don't uh, know. Sh- shira um oh damn i, I don't uh, even know who you're talking mark about. price thank you geez mark price geez. there we go mark price i mean you know this guy was a career 90 percent marksman from the free throw line he was what steve nash was you know over a decade before steve nash even came around in the league yeah. you know um you know they they were just they were just stacked with him uh the I mean, Warriors, Tur- 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 Brandon 
Yeah, Run DMC. Yeah, with Mitch Richmond, uh, well, Trump, a young Tim Hart. Very well. And, uh, no, Free Will wasn't on until. The well, 90s, I guess he was. 90s. He was in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. I guess Chris Run the DMC. There too. Yeah, Chris, I was thinking the Mullen, Mitch Richmond, and Tim Hardaway trio, yeah. um, which which would have been actually one of the first super teams if you thought about it. Yeah, Tim yeah. Hardaway. There's a guy that. Uh, you, you, did you hear this the stuff on him? Uh, actually, it happened a while back, but how he was talking about how he he hated homosexuals and he just he never wanted to be if he knew there was a gay player on his team, he would never want to have contact with him or have him in the same room. I saw that. I lost yeah, a lot of respect for him because of yeah, that. that was a long time ago. But over the last ten years, he's actually uh, jumped on a bunch of uh, LGBTQ activist yeah, rights groups and apologized. Better. And yeah, um, so I mean, good on him for trying to change his belief. Anyways. Um, you know, with the 90s, it wasn't just about Jordan and the Bulls. You know, you have to remember that I think what the 2010s kind of was boring for me was constantly watching the Warriors just tear up the Western Conference mm -hmm. and always playing the Cavs in the finals. I was just so tired of seeing that matchup. I didn't mind yeah. if the same team was going to the finals, but I wanted to see new teams play them. And the 90s brought that because the Bulls only played one team, which was the Jazz, in more than one championship. Yeah. Um, you know, they Jazz almost won. Yeah, the Jazz did almost win. You yeah. Know? Um, they're and like that a just free throw away. Yeah, they, they were. And it's just, it's funny because that same decade, I think where we're at now, the fact that teams are shooting such a high volume of threes and the fact that the free throw line has become such a paramount portion of the game, like those are the two biggest things, like the mid-range game and even, even in the arc, I mean, it's like even inside the lane, like just layups and shots five feet and in, they're, they're not non-existent, but they're just at such a low point. Why would you they, shoot it? Why, like, say that again? Why would you ever do it when you can hit a three? Like that statistically, it's better for you to hit a three. True. You're right. It is, but it's boring yeah. in my opinion. I, I think the nineties had the largest array and the largest array of different types of shots you could take. And each player had such a vast arsenal to play with. Like, so you look at a guy like Hakeem Olajuwon, he could take yeah. 18 feet from the basket. He could get inside and, you know, throw a couple Rajon Rondo it's, fakes it's up here. He got a gym shake. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. You look at a guy like that, you know, you look at a guy like Reggie Miller, who, you know, he primarily was a solid, just, just three point shooter, but, yeah. uh, you know, he, he got to the basket. He had a mid range game. Um, you know, like centers, teams were built around the center and power forward position in the 90s. You know, the center position in particular. I mean, that was the greatest decade for big men. You got Shaq, a young Shaquille O'Neal, who literally at 300 pounds could God. glide across the court Shaq almost as cool. easily as Giannis. You yeah. know, um, and then you've got what David Robinson, yeah. Patrick Ewing, and then Akeem, Akeem. of course. Um, Carl you know, to Kimpe, Lover, Lover, big Carl, man too. Yeah, Charles Barkley, to Kimpe yeah. Mutombo. Like, you know, you have these guys that just. Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp. Don't forget Thank about you. Sean Kemp. The human highlight reel after Do Dr. J retired. You know, he owns like a vegan restaurant now, I think. In Seattle. What? Well, he yeah. lives in Seattle, so I would, I would assume that, that makes I'm sense. sure he owns a vegan restaurant. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt I'm it at all. Because I can't. You know? I mean, the, the fact that you have those 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 players down there, you know, the they they got rid of because um, Charles Barkley and Shaq, you know, they, they added the five second back to the basket rule in the 90s. They didn't have that rule, you know, so these guys would just start at the three point line and they would back you down by 15 feet. So for like 10 seconds, they would just back you towards the paint yep. and then dunk over you or shoot over you. And that that was it. Um, and I thought I just I, I enjoyed the physicality of it. I thought it was more it reminded me of. A, a more a, like a even more faster paced game of football at some points um because they were able to they were able to bump and grind so hard and you know they were just able to you, you get someone knocked to the floor and they better get up and they better they better come up and fight back or they're getting taken out of the game and the other team yeah. has the mental and psychological edge um you trash talking was just it was just so beautiful back then with, you know, Gary Payton, Dennis Rodman. Gary uh, Payton Scott. so good at trash. Gary, he was such an asshole. Yeah. That, that, Reggie Miller? Uh, <laughs> Reggie Miller, yeah. Yeah, dude, Reggie Miller yeah. never, even as a commentator, didn't shut up. Yeah, he's the worst. Like, <laughs> he's an asshole. Like, he, the definition he of an asshole. He, he's like, a dick. If you look the, at, like, asshole up in Webster's, you just see Reggie <laughs> Miller and his stupid smiling face. Yeah. And you look, you look at 
when you're looking at the entire 90s decade, you know, outside of naming all these Hall of Famers that, that we mentioned, you know, um, yeah. and I know we're obviously forgetting some, but you you see the end of, so the, the you see the end of the Pistons when they won in 90. You saw the very end of their era, and you saw the torch being passed to Jordan and the Bulls. Yeah. And then you saw the end of the Lakers run in 91 when they came out and they beat an aging, you know, Urban Johnson and a, an yeah. aging... Um, uh, not LJ, James Worthy, you know, and so we we see that, and then we see the you know the, one of those next years we see Clyde the Glide Drexler and Terry Porter, and they bring the Blazers into contention, and Clyde's like, I got something to prove, I'm the best shooting guard in the game, and Jordan's yeah. like, No, you're not, yeah, like you're going to be the second best shooting guard until you retire, and there's nothing you can do about Drexler it. Drexler a small forward. No, he's a shooting guard. I mean, he's. I mean, you know, uh, shooting guards can always play the three. That's but he true. was. He was a two. Yeah, there's. Yeah, he's always a two. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, it's. And then you f- you feel bad too for. But there were just so many colossal battles. The the Bulls never went in and just completely dominated in the conference finals and the championship. Yeah. It was always a series because, you know, they they were not a perfect team i mean they still lost games i mean you know you had also those huge storylines when jordan retired we, we were sure it was we were told by the media it was because his father was murdered but how much also was it david stern being like look we know you have a huge gambling addiction yeah. we don't yeah, know how much money in trouble for gambling yeah we don't know how much money you've actually put on maybe nba games who knows yeah. like we don't we don't know because he's never going to admit it neither will stern because he was you know he was such a uh, global icon um but we see that huge debacle and then we see his, you know, ascension into baseball and then it opens up the floor for everybody to come on out. And, well, and it's a it's a brawl. It's a street. Fight also, at that point. Well, like, I want to know what happens if he doesn't take that break in 94, 95. Right. OK. Yeah. And has to play Houston. Yeah. Who? What, what happens? Here's what the happens? thing. I, I hear a lot of people saying they're like, oh, they're like, I mean, they're going to win eight straight. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. I don't, took, I don't think uh, they beat uh, Hakeem and Drexler. At least in one of them. At least at least yeah, in like, one of those championships. They lose one of those. Because do you know how hard it is? And they talk about it in The Last Dance. Like, yeah. as a champion, you keep coming back for eight years in a row, and you're playing for nine months out of the year consistently. Yeah. And you don't have that drive to be the underdog and win it all. Like, you know, how, how long does your motivation and desire stick around to, to be the champ? Like, is the fire still, is it blazing at by year five or six? Or has it died out by year three or four? So I, I don't think they would have won eight in a row, honestly. I thought they would have lost at least one of those. I, I um, mean, I don't think, I honestly don't think they beat the Rockets those two years. The two it's years. Close. Oh, it's I don't know about that. It's close. Maybe. It is close. Hakeem, I mean, I, Hakeem Drexler, Sam Cassell, a young Sam Cassell, a very young Sam Cassell, who was not Robert as good as he was when he played for the T Wolves. Robert, yeah, Mary, like, Robert Ory, Otis Sampson, like I mean, Burn yeah, Maxwell. Otis Thorpe. Excuse me, yeah, Burn Burn Maxwell. Maxwell. Thorpe was there. Yeah, Kenny Smith. <laughs> yeah, Kenny the Jet Smith. So yeah. here's the thing: you have to you have to remember too, like. The Rockets, the first year they won when they went to seven games with the Knicks, Olajuwon was, he was LeBron or Jordan when they just carried their teams. Everybody was a role player around him. He was the only superstar, the only all-star they had. And so when he played, when they had the second year, when they went up against one of the saddest stories, in my opinion, what happened to Penny Hardaway, because he was the next coming of Michael Jordan, would have been a first ballot Hall of Famer, had his knee problems not, you know, um, given him so much trouble over the second half of his career, uh, just like Grant Hill. But you know, when he came back, yeah, then Clyde Drexler had been traded to the team for that second uh, championship run. Yeah. Um, and remember that year, they were a six seed. They came out of the West as a freaking six seed. They had to beat yeah. the Spurs, the Jazz, and I don't remember the third team they beat, but that's yeah, not but an easy it, task. It was impressive when they came out, honestly. The, the, that yeah, West team was special. It was. It was It was a special team, and that was a great time to be a Rockets fan. Um, yeah. You know, and it, so we see – and then we see Jordan come back, and we see him lose to the Magic in the second round. You know, we see yeah. Nick Anderson – we see him as a mortal. He's a, he's a mortal, finally, not immortal. He's an actual mortal because we see – yeah, and like game game one or two of the semifinals in uh, 90, um, 95, um, in the 95 playoffs, we see Nick Anderson at the end of that game. I think you remember that iconic shot where he like, cut, like he, Jordan beats him on the fast break out of the backboard, yeah. and then he sneaks up behind him, and he picks the ball off, and then he flips it back to Penny, and Penny runs the other way and jams it home, and the, yep. the Magic go up 2-0. Um, yep. 
and, and so it's just like you know you, you see that he's he's a human and he bleeds and he's wary and he's actually he's coming back from leaving for a year and a half and being on a hiatus and he's got to get back into game shape and then we see them win three more and you know you see the you see the struggles that the Jazz went through and you feel bad because, you know, um, the Jazz were, I don't know, like... They were good. The, the Bulls were, I guess they would be, like, America's team and the Jazz would be... Oh, so you're calling the, the Cowboys now, huh? Essentially, yeah. Yeah, the Cowboys in the 90s. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess the Cowboys were America's team in the 90s until they got the name. Uh, um, and then after that, you see the end of the Bulls era, and then you see the lockout season in 98, 99, and you see the beginning of my favorite dynasty of the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, and you see yeah. that Tim Duncan has an argument, I still think to this day, to be the GOAT. I honestly I honestly think you can put his resume up against well, Jordan's. He's definitely the best LeBron forward of all time. Well, that's just my opinion. I, I, I think that's not I think he's definitely the best power forward of all time. Sure, I, but I, I'm telling you, I think you could make it. I can make it a debate for him. We'll do it in another episode. It's a I long conversation. That. That'd be yeah, great. but I, 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 think I, can, I love Duncan, but I don't know. I, I, you know what? I there's a lot of people really forget about his earlier years where he averaged 25 and 13 a game, yeah. and the Spurs played ISO basketball. And David Robinson, at the end of his career, was like 35 to 39, and Tony Parker wasn't playing with him till uh, what 02, and Ginobili yeah. wasn't there till 03. Yeah. So he wasn't playing with these Hall of Fame teammates no, and winning just, titles. He won by himself. So yeah. I don't know. That's um, true. But, and he but was dominant, see, too. He was scary dominant. He was. And he played in an era where there were other really good frontcourt players. So yeah. it's not just like, oh, his competition was weak. You know, um, Shaq, Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning was big. Uh, uh, I guess uh, C, C. Webb, Will, was there. Jermaine O'Neal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't I, I don't know. It's 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 a it's a really fun debate to have because it's, it's all subjective. I mean, there's really no way of actually yeah. knowing which it is. Um, I've always loved the nineties, like, like myself, just cause you still had, I feel like the competition, even though the bulls did win six titles, the Pistons still won, the Spurs still won, the Rockets still won two. And there was still a lot of fierce competition. And in the 2010s, you know, and even in the two thousands, which is another one of my favorite decades, um, you know, you only, the, the Warriors were winning all of them, or, yeah. you know, the Heat were always there. Um, the 2000s, it was always the Lakers or the Spurs oh, the for the Spurs. most part. Those were the two um, championship teams. Yeah. Whoever won in the Western Conference Finals yeah, in the going. 2000s was going to win the NBA title. Yeah. Like, that, that was, that was so the NBA bad. championship. The East was so bad. <laughs> they were. The, early, the, the 2000s Eastern Conference was the weakest conference like in the history of the league. Seasons, and that's it? Yeah. Yeah, you guys like Allen Iverson by himself. Allen Iverson who didn't practice? I mean, practice. we're talking about practice. We're talking about practice? Oh, my God. Um, the and I, you know, I, 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 I just, I love the, I just, I miss the physicality of it. I miss the, I miss the, the multitude of different ways. This, the scoring arsenal was more diverse from the individual stars. And I think the depth of talent was spread more evenly across all of the top teams. I think yeah. every year going in, the Bulls were always going to be up at the top, but there were always six to eight other teams that really did have a puncher's chance of getting in there and making some noise. And I feel like with a lot of these other decades, it was usually only two to four teams. So yeah. I felt there's more competition. Um, but that's just, yeah, that's just me. I don't know. You know I still think me. using our criteria, you know, the parameters, the variables contributing to the greatest era in NBA history, you know, we're talking about entertainment value, level of skill, depth of right. talent. I still think 2010 to 2020 beats the 90s. Right. Well, it's okay to be wrong, but you know, entertainment cool. value. <laughs> but entertainment value is subjective. If we, oh, well, know, what we, skill? <laughs> what level of skill is not subjective? That's that's a fact. Like you yeah. can see that on paper. The level of skill back. I don't know. Yeah. I just I I can think the stats the, say that 2010 to 2020 is better. No, where do the stats say that? Because the amount oh, of points are scored per game. If you're going with that logic, then you go back to the the seventies when they were scoring like where the ABA was scoring like 130 a game. Like <laughs> it's actually so I don't I, I looked this up earlier because I was interested when we were talking about points per game. Yeah. In 1961 to 62 season actually averages the most. The sixties okay. to the seventies. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, 61 to 62 was 118 points per game. Wow. And then, like, sense. every I mean, 60 onward until we get uh, the, the, the ninth most points per game per season would be the mm -hmm. 70 to 71. Everything else mm -hmm. after that is 60 still. 
Yeah. It's crazy. That is nuts. And I mean, you look at that, and that's that was the same decade that, you know, Oscar Rob the big O averaged a triple yeah. double. Oscar Robertson scored a hundred points and went it's a full really season scoring. Well yeah, it was it was Chamberlain. He was, you know, averaged fifty points and thirty two yeah. rebounds a game for a whole fifty point season. Four points and twenty five point seven rebounds a game God, in sixty one sixty two. That's just insane. Yeah. That is just that's just insane. Yeah. Um you but know, and I, I, like five inches taller than everybody else who was playing. So yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was. You know, that's true. And I mean, he definitely. There was. I mean, you know, his his main competition was Bill Russell, and that's yeah. that's probably it. But I think I think Will, even in the night, even if you threw him into the the best big man era ever, which was the nineties, I think that's hard to dispute as far as big man goes. Um, I don't. I, know. I think he would still. I think he'd still do know. well. I don't think he'd have another twenty five. Uh, I don't know but, if he could beat up Shaq, Hakeem. Robin. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, okay, I'll tell you a story. Um, two stories real quick. There is a real story quick. where Wilt, Wilt Chamberlain would – well, I guess it was actually just one. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was listening to a podcast. He was on – I can't remember if it was – I want to say it was actually Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan experience, or it was – maybe it may have been somebody on ESPN. Anyways, I was watching it a while back, and Arnold Schwarzenegger said that he used to work out – he and Lou Ferrigno would work out with Wilt Chamberlain during their Mr. Universe days. And he was saying that they would go in like these huge muscle heads, you know, um, they would come in and they would max out at about like 130 to 140 pounds on tricep extensions. Okay? Yeah. Will Chamberlain would warm up with 180 pounds on tricep extensions. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so Shaq, his max, his personal max is around 420 pounds about, you know, yeah. uh, oh, more than his body weight. Will Chamberlain on average during warmups would bench 500 pounds. So, I, he may not have weighed as much as Shaq, but he was still 7'1", 285, and the strongest player to ever play the game. I actually think he and Shaq would have some amazing yeah. competitions against each other, but as far as just pure strength goes, I think yeah. that's probably the strongest of all time. I, I um, still don't think he, he – I don't think he comes close to what he averaged. Oh, sure. Absolutely not. I mean, he, But I can see him being 30 and 20 again, 30 and 15 easily. Yeah, I, I, could, I could see that happening. Um, I mean, he did average 30 and 20. But I'm, I guess I was 22 uh, for the career. Okay, yeah, I guess I was thinking the 50 and 25 season. Yeah, I don't think you could get close to that. But, but he, I mean, you know, he was just. I think that just, drops down to probably like 24 and 13. I I think it'd be a little higher than that. But I, I somewhere it would definitely be it would be reduced. Absolutely, I, okay. I can agree with you on that. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, I, I I guess you know what you know, what do you guys think is the best decade for? Uh, of, of in the NBA for all time, um, whether it be just headline stories or, you know, where we're currently at. Um, I mean, the 90s also brought the international appeal finally because Jordan, yep. there's no sports icon that I think you put Jordan, Babe Ruth, and Muhammad Ali in the same stratosphere of the importance to the game uh, or to sports in general. And I don't think you can really put anybody else up there outside of those three. Um just how he grew the game you know i mean no other players ever had their own sneaker brand like it's just i mean that has been as successful as jordan's has um so i don't know what do you guys think comment below um let us know what you think um nick and i are always up to to see your opinions and uh you know we we uh, definitely love uh detailed opinions and facts not just like oh you guys are dumb i think the 80s were the best okay well great you know fuck you <laughs> because that doesn't that yeah. doesn't help us like that's not a logical pragmatic yeah. answer you know, give us why. like yeah give us reasoning and we're more than happy to we're more happy to talk about it with you um but unfortunately we are pretty much all out of time for this week so uh nick unless you got anything else on any other portion that you wanted to Chat uh, about I mean, I would like to say that Dak Prescott just signed his franchise tender. Did he? I did not I hear that. ESPN is just reporting it. Let me. Oh, okay. plans to sign is what we what we find out. So okay. that's going to be big. Okay. He's going to sign a thirty one point four million dollar franchise tag, which that's is what, he, which is what he's worth, maybe less. Yeah. But we'll that's see. We'll see how he plays this season. Yeah. If we if he throws for almost five thousand yards, thirty touchdowns, you yeah. know, eight, eight picks, million. and we. Yeah, and we get into the playoffs and do well. Sure, we give him 32, yeah, 35 million a year. Well, this year he'll get he'll get close to forty million again. Yeah, he'll be the highest paid quarterback in the league. Yeah. Uh, because right. we're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> we are. Yep, we say that every year. We have said yeah. that every year since high school. It's been fifteen years, and we It'll we happen. still haven't even, we haven't been back to the conference championship since the nineties. So good on us. Uh, anyways, <laughs> what were we saying? This is the year. 
this is the year. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks for listening in um, for all of us here. At There's no crying in podcasting. We'll see you next week. Adios. <laughs>